So the intangible parts of our existence, such as emotions, are part of the true reality of higher consciousness. If emotions are part of a realm that we cannot experience with our five senses, then how is it that we are all aware of our emotions? What most people believe to be emotions are not truly the emotion itself. What we are experiencing is the physical manifestation of these emotions. Anger causes disturbance in the psyche which manifests itself in the ego. These manifestations cause the heart rate to increase, body temperature to rise, and spawn many other physical traits that signify anger. Just as music from the radio is a physical manifestation of an intangible signal, our experience of emotion is the physical manifestation of an intangible signal as well. It has been shown that our emotions have a vibratory frequency to them. Furthermore, there are only two emotions that humankind experiences, fear and love. All other emotions branch either directly or indirectly from these two emotions. Fear has a long and slow frequency vibration to it, while love has a very rapid and high frequency. To show that vibration is the very foundation of existence, Hans Jene developed what is known as cymatics in the 1940s to show that when vibrations of sound are passed through a form of media, there is a set pattern that will follow. When the frequency increases, the media develops into a more complex pattern. This is precisely what is happening to our Earth and to humanity. There are 64 possible codes of amino acids in our DNA structure made from four elements, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. By any means of logic, we should have all 64 codes activated within our DNA structure. Yet we presently only have 20 active codes. And of these 64 possibilities, it appears that only 20 of these codes are turned on right now for us, the 20 amino acids. There is a switch that turns off and turns on where those coding sites lie, and that the switch uh, for that turning off and turning on is what we call emotion. And this is the first time that we've ever seen the patterns of emotion directly physically linked to human genetic material. Well, fear is a long, slow wave of emotion. So this wave of fear is a long, slow wave and touches relatively few sites on this DNA. So an individual living in fear is limited to the number of antenna that they have available to them. Whereas an individual uh, living in the pattern of love, this is love in DNA. You can see it's, it's a higher frequency, shorter uh, wavelength. We have many more potential sites for coding uh, along that genetic pattern. This information, this is amazing. This is the first time we've ever had a hard digital link between emotion and genetics. This is important to understand because another researcher named Vladimir Popinov measured tiny particles of light called photons inside a vacuum tube. The photons were scattered as expected. A sample of DNA was then entered into the vacuum tube and they measured the photons again. They found that the particles of light aligned themselves along the axis of the DNA. Then, as they removed the DNA sample, the photons remained aligned to the same form of the DNA even though no DNA was present. This is what is known as the phantom DNA experiment. Science has now bridged a very important gap between physical and ethereal, or spiritual. Our emotions directly affect the structure of our DNA, which directly shapes the physical world we experience every day. So the messages left by the ancients that we've explained here were more than just prophecies about a one world government or a new world order. We now understand why the study of the heavenly bodies were so important. The rotation and orbit of all that makes up our universe serves as a clock to map changes and transitions. This helped the ancients understand that the change of the heavenly bodies were a mirror to the changes of all existence. December 21st, 2012 is simply a natural transition from one form of energy to the next, the transcendental evolution of man. This date is what's known as zero point. Our sun, as well as our planet Earth, is losing its magnetic field as the Earth is slowing in its rotation. All the while, its base resonant frequency, also known as the Schumann cavity resonance, is increasing in accordance with the predictable sequence of the Fibonacci theory. At a cellular level, our bodies respond to an electromagnetic pulse. The ancients called this the sacred circuit. 
The cells receive this pulse from the brain, which receives its pulse from the heart, which receives its pulse from the earth. This pulse comes from the solar system, which from there comes from the galaxy, which ultimately comes from our entire universe. We literally share a pulse with all of existence. Yet another example of everything being one. For as long as scientists have been recording the Earth's pulse, it has remained at approximately 7.8 cycles per second. This was a constant fixed number until 1986 into 1987. It rapidly began increasing to about 9 cycles per second in 1996. So in one decade, it increased by about 2 cycles per second. By 2012, this pulse will be right around 13 cycles per second, just as the Fibonacci theory indicates. What does this mean for humanity? Just as cymatics has shown that higher frequencies result in more complex patterns, we are now experiencing the beginning of a major shift in both physical and spiritual vibration. It's difficult to understand what exactly will happen to our physical bodies, but ancient scriptures, pagan and monotheistic religions, mystery schools, and secret fraternal orders have all given indications as to what this experience will be like. This will be the shift of the ages, the transcendental period of monumental changes to humanity. Those unprepared for this transition will likely not be able to cope with the rapid changes in the psyche. The only way to prepare for what is to come is what we have sought after for our entire lives. Truth. Not the truth about governments, commerce, religions, terrorism, or anything external, but the truth within ourselves, within our psyche and our shadow self. Especially in Western cultures, we are taught that being normal means only being happy and never sad, only loving and never angry, only forgiving and never jealous. This sounds plausible, but it is not. We are not meant to repress any negative emotions because it causes imbalance. To conquer our emotions, we must embrace them, not fight them. We must acknowledge them and allow them to serve their purpose as we learn from them. The ancient Essene culture left teachings dating back about 6,000 years. They taught that our relationships with one another, with the universe, and with situations and events are mirrors of the parts of our psyche that need to be cleansed. Author Greg Braden beautifully explains this entire segment at great length in his work. His hard work and understanding of these subjects contributed largely to the marriage between science and spirituality. It is very important to understand that when you fear loss, fear death, fear war, fear terrorism, or fear change, you are giving others the ability to control you based on those fears. When you fight against poverty or against racism, when you fight for relationships or for freedom, you are outwardly attempting to repress that which has been placed before you to conquer inwardly. These situations are mirrors of our fears. This is why it is important to love and only love. Love those who stand with you, but especially those who stand against you. Don't look at your fears as a threat, rather understand that this material world is only a physical manifestation of either the love or fear in your consciousness. It's as plain as day. All you need to conquer in your life is in your face. If you want to understand what your true inner fears are, analyze your ambitions and your inhibitions. Everything explained here about the esoteric agenda of the elite few at the very top is nothing to fear. They have been at work for thousands of years behind the scenes to manipulate humanity. And it has worked. Until now. It's very easy for any system of thought, religious or otherwise, that comes along. It's very easy to play on that, to play on our insecurities, to assure us all is well, we'll all be taken care of. We lap that up. So don't blame religion. Blame our own insecurities, which has allowed religion to flourish and which has allowed so many systems of thought that are disempowering to flourish throughout human history. That's why we can't get out of it.